Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell on Thursday, August 6, 2015. Can you believe that? It's August already. And we're here with news and views from the Nefarium, as usual. Uh, the news and views from the Nefarium this week is from its Department of Transhumanist Tyranny. Uh, I have two articles that were sent to me by a couple of you, and I looked at them, and I thought, holy cow, they're actually telling us, finally. Not that we didn't know how they were going to do it. They've been hinting at it all along, but now we're getting even more clear indications of how they're planning to implement the transhumanist agenda. One of these articles is from two years ago from the Palm Desert Sun Digital Online News Service, and the other one is from this year. I'll put up the links on the... Uh, on the video on YouTube so that you can look at these articles. But um, the first article is about robot maggots, <laughs> okay, that have been invented by a physician at the University of Maryland's School of Medicine. And the reason he's invented them, I'm, I'm simply going to refer you to this article. I'm not going to read anything from it because it's a fairly short article. The reason he's invented these robot maggots is so that they can be injected and eat brain tumors. Okay, And I found this particularly interested, interesting. I had a sister that died from a uh, glioblastoma, which is one of those brain tumors that follows the folds and wrinkles in the brain. So they're impossible to remove with surgery. And therefore, they're terminal and, and fatal unless they come up with some alternative type of therapy. And in fact, in my sister's case, we did uh, try an alternative therapy on her, which actually looked to have been successful. But she actually died from complications of the procedure. All right. So in other words, she really didn't die from the glioblastoma. She died from the alternative therapy that uh, we tried on her. It was a platinum injection therapy, which appeared on the x-rays to have killed after we saw the, uh, we were all, all of us, her doctor and her husband and I saw these uh, pictures and we were all rather somewhat astonished. Well, these robot maggots that this doctor has been developing, he has specifically use the example of brain tumors. And I'm thinking that he's thinking precisely of glioblastomas, those tumors that follow the folds of the brain. And what they do is they eat the cancerous material and leave the healthy material alone. So the interesting thing here is I predicted, and we've been seeing the, the transhumanists predict that all of these technologies, genetics, robotics, information technology, nanotechnology, are going to be sold to humanity as a medical benefit, as a good thing. All right, now let's remember what the goal of the transhumanist is. It's to modify humanity itself. So in other words, remember that even though these technologies might actually be beneficial, the real goal is the modification of human nature itself. Now, with that in mind, I want to turn to the more recent article. This is from June uh, 27th, 2015. And this is a real humdinger because when you read this thing, what you see is yet another technique that they're going to use to promote the introduction of these technologies into society. And as you listen to this article, I want you to think of two things, <laughs> okay? I want you to think of GMOs, and I want you to think of Monster Santo, all right? Listen to this. Maybe the solution to all crime is more surveillance and direct control over the minds of all prisoners anyone marked with violent tendencies, and ultimately anyone in society. That's what one futurist is proposing as he runs on a political platform based around psychophysical state control over mind and body. Zoltan Istvan, a presidential candidate for the Transhumanist Party, thinks that prisoners would be better motivated to obey the law if the death penalty were abolished and it be replaced by implanting a surveillance brain chip 
that notifies the law and can even deploy a tranquilizer triggered to block violent behavior. Now, stop right there, because this is telling me two things. Number one, the Transhumanist Party obviously has no chance whatsoever as an e actual electoral party. But it also tells me that they are now beginning to push this very deliberately and publicly into the realm of political debate. Okay? So in other words, they are deliberately beginning to prepare people for the possibility of a technology that can be implanted that is a openly declared surveillance technology, which if you do not conform to certain predictable behaviors, they can use that chip to inject or to stimulate or to uh, tranquilize human behavior. Now, before you... you reject that idea. I want you to put it into wider contexts uh, of what's going on in healthcare and in education. And I think those of you who've been following the news will know exactly what I'm talking about. This is all part of, in my opinion, something that's interlocked and linked together. Now let's continue. Of course, once it becomes legal to control the brains of one sector of society, convicted criminals, the rest of society may follow, each with their own rationales and justifications that make using spy chips inside the brain somehow acceptable. Brain implants able to manage out-of-control tempers and violent actions of prisoners were suggested to minimize crime rates in the United States and as an alternative to the death penalty, according to Zoltan Istvan. The future presidential candidate for the Transhumanist Party, Istvan suggested that the technology could be a near-term alternative for criminals on death row and might be considered sufficient punishment. Now listen to the next statement. This is another huge clue. Violent crime is a version of mental disease. Istvan stated in an article published in Motherboard suggesting conducting brain alterations to prisoners could change behavior and attitudes of criminals into decent members of society. Unquote. And right there you have the underlying philosophical presupposition that has been driving the cosmology, so to speak, of the political radicals, all right? And I include certain major political parties in all Western countries in that diagnosis because if you listen carefully to what he's just said, all violent crime is simply a mental disorder. It's a problem with the brain chemistry. And, of course, there we have the reduction. There is no such thing as virtue. There really isn't any such thing as vice. There is no such thing really as evil. And, therefore, we can tinker with the physical aspects of consciousness itself. Now, I suspect, folks, that what you've seen here is the ploy is being announced. Let's take this technology and experiment. You see, what's really being suggested here is they want to get their hands on the human prison populations in the West, and particularly in the United States, but I would also aver Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and so on. They want to get their hands on the human populations of prisons. In other words, people who have effectively lost their rights under the law and experiment with these technologies on these people. That's what's being suggested here. And folks, I'm going to suggest to you uh, clearly and unequivocally that this agenda is, and I'm going to state it very, very succinctly, this agenda is diabolical and evil. It's the agenda of the Nazi doctors. And it has to be opposed because as the article goes on and as it has already stated, once you allow this, then it's going to be pressed for the population at large. That's you and me. And I'm sorry, I don't think any of us, or most of us perhaps, listening to these little videos that I do once a week, are really comfortable with turning over the oversight of our very intellectual and emotional life to a hidden elite run by corporations and politicians. 
Uh, this is a do or die matter, quite literally. So watch this one, folks. This is now the Department of Transhumanist Tyranny of the Nefarium rearing its ugly head. I want to read you the way this article ends. It says, a simple formula, really. Keep the status quo instituted by the power monopoly of the state. Do nothing to change unfair systemic, economic, and sociopolitical problems. Let known cheats and liars continue to operate a rigged game. Then keep tabs on everyone. Push a few buttons to make everyone afraid, not only to commit crimes and hurt other people, but afraid to speak out and stand out at all. Right to bear arms? Not a good idea especially if it means arms in the hands of people who are quick to anger or capable of violent tendencies at all. Use a few consumer incentives to keep everyone in line. And keep pushing the pleasure button, the artificial happiness button, and keep the information about what is really going on swept under the carpet so that everyone learns to love their servitude. Yeah. What else could go wrong? Well, I submit that they're correct. That if you cannot own your own body, if you cannot own your own emotions, your own thoughts, then freedom is over and so is responsibility. And that's a diabolical, diabolical world. So that's it for today's news and views from the Nefarium. I'll see you on the flip side, everybody, and God bless.